population, and welcome to Off the Rack. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. This is the comic book review show where we take a comic book and break it down by its basic elements of art writing and then tell you what we thought about it. Today, we're going to talk about Spider Man Deadpool number three, written by Joe Kelly with art by Ed McGuinness. But before we do that, this episode is brought to you by Comic Pop, the channel that you're watching right now. <laughs> we make lots of different shows besides our review show, including back issues, panels to pixels, uh, powers. They also have a whole bunch of other random stuff, including five things you didn't know. Um, what other things do we do? I guess tangents. Tangents, very good. Comic uh, line. Comic line, a comic book in-depth discussion series. There's lots of assortments that you can see right here where Ben is uh, actually sitting uh, using the cards and whatnot. You can click those and it'll take you over to other shows that click we do. Click me! This is part three of Bromance. Yeah! What'd you think? It's a fun story. Yeah! It is fun. It's so fun. I said I should have hot chocolate on this show. It's true. Is it, I don't know. Yeah, in springtime. Well, it's cold outside right now. Yeah, yeah. it is cold and rainy. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of dreary. Yeah, I could totally see Deadpool. Enjoying a hot cup of hot cocoa. chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Through his mask. <laughs> Joe Kelly is no stranger to the Deadpool character, but his Spider-Man is, I think, rather interesting because he approaches it from the perspective of... Spider-Man is not a fan of Deadpool in yeah. any which way. I can't imagine he would be. Right? Right, yeah. I, but uh, but it, it's not... But Cle Joe Kelly has written a lot of Deadpool, so you can imagine that Kelly has an affinity for the character. But he's also not afraid to make one of the flagship characters vehemently against this character. And mm -hmm. I think that as a result, he becomes a little bit of a stick in the mud. Well, yeah, he's the straight man. He's you the straight man. You have to have a straight man if you're pairing Deadpool up with someone. Which is funny because Spider-Man is a straight man you wouldn't think would yeah. work. <laughs> what do you guys think of the story and the writing in general? The story's very cool. I liked this trip that they took down to Bolivia. I really like the whole idea that, like, Parker separates himself from Spider-Man a little bit. Yeah, because of the whole Parker Industries thing. Yeah. you got to have, like... An imposter who pretends to... It's very Iron Man. I was going to say, it's very Batman. It is very bat. It's, it's very any <laughs> character that has money to spare to have a, a you know, stand-in. Right? And this book does a really good job of, if you jumped in here, which we kind of did. Yes. Like, yeah, part catching three. you up. Yep. And there you go. Bam. I gotta be honest, I started reading a little bit of one. Mm -hmm. I wish we had read one. I know. Do you know who's in that? <laughs> it's Dormammu. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... That's awesome! I also really like the recap page. I just thought it was well written. Some of them, you could tell they throw it to an intern because mm -hmm. there are grammatical errors or there's character mistakes. I just liked it. I thought yeah, it well, nice. I mean, when you're dealing with a Deadpool book, you have the right and the opportunity to break the fourth wall. Well, or at least play with it. Yeah. Play with the format. Make Explore it the fun. Space. Yeah, exactly. This issue is following the Avengers trailer, yeah. or the um, Civil War II trailer, in which Spider-Man shows up. Yeah. And Deadpool's doing still amazing at the box office. So it's really funny that this book would come out now with that intro page where they're like, maybe you didn't care about this book yeah. before. But now you do. But now you might. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because both of uh, these characters are in your face. Yeah. Such that we did a whole episode about just Spider-Man appearing in the Civil War trailer. Right? Yeah, you did. It was awesome. Thank you. I really like Spider-Man in this. I know you're not... No, I like him too. Peter Parker in his oh, own yeah. book. But like in this, this was fun. No, everybody else is doing a really, really great job with Peter Parker Spider-Man. What'd you guys think of Ed McGuinness's art? I like it. I love Ed McGuinness's art in general. Uh, it's much more zany and cartoony and comic booky. But it's not so much so that like it's like crazy proportions. Like anatomy spot on. Yes. The action poses are fantastic, and yep. you could definitely like they make sense. It's not over the walls like. Warner Brothers cartoon, no, you know? No, it, like... it's... The one that I think of every time is uh, Red Hulk. When Ed McGuinness drew the introduction of the Red Hulk character, it was supposed to be ridiculous. And you, so you could, ex you could expect something kind of outlandish or off the wall to happen, mm -hmm. but to characters that you're following a story for. Right. So it doesn't really disrupt anything. What I always like, and it, I'm sure this is not true about every single Deadpool book, but the ones that I've had the experience with... Um, Deadpool books are always very colorful, which I always love the juxtaposition of the intense violence and graphic content of the book with this bright, colorful, welcoming, you know, almost childlike palette. palette. And yeah. like, I just, I love it because you still have it in here. So Spider-Man fits in perfectly yep. in this. 
And it's just like when they're down in Bolivia, there's just violence and crazy. You know what I mean? And, I, and it's just it's just so bright and happy at the same time. I love it. Yeah. Which is a cool juxtaposition for the villains that they faced because Sticks and Stone were very dark and yeah. gray and very downplayed. Yeah. But even he, their even their speech was like that. Yeah. And they're very go- they were very goth. You know what's funny? Dark. Yeah. But like so like I still even though like they may have been a more muted color palette, like they're still done in these kind of brighter tones regardless and. For me, I I just I don't know. I, I their speech version, like I don't know. I that I took that completely as like a joke, you know. Like, they are a joke. Yeah. Those characters are a joke, and they were products of the '90s. They looked very different from what I remember them to be when oh, they were really? like sticks and stone. I'm like, no. Because like if you get that to a different artist, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, well, sticks is supposed to look creepy and weird. Right. Stone but, like, was just a guy, and now he's a rock man. Right. But imagine like 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 a, a truly like you know a, an artist who does horror. Yes doing this oh man it would be very different it would feel very different this feels like a comic book yeah i know and i love it but like i I, they just did a really good job of taking all these elements from different books yeah and different universe like not necessarily universes but different storylines and just making them feel like they all belong there it's true so there you go guys spider-man deadpool number three came out last week pick it up in your comic book store or online but now we're going to tell you what we think you should pick up for this week coming out tomorrow i recommended dr fate number eight oh yeah I still think it's good. I recommend Dr. Fate number 10 this week. Okay. It's cool stuff that Dr. Fate's doing. He's in Egypt. He's working out powers. It's cool. I think the art's cool. I think the story's nice. Does he have a suit yet? Uh, Or is he just a guy? From what I can tell, he's still just a guy with the helmet. Right, with the helmet. Which is (laughs) arguably the coolest part of his costume. Yes. Cynical me thinks that Ben only picks Dr. Fate because of my... Like, interest in Doctor Strange. It's like, well, then I'll take the DC interest. guy. I'll take yeah, a different the Doctor. DC <laughs> version of Doctor Strange. Yeah. <laughs> Here come all the DC fans who are like, mm, Doctor Fate came first. Hey, you know what? Not in my heart. Yeah. I'm also really looking forward to, and this is my number one pick. My number one pick for this week is Extraordinary X Men number eight. Written by Jeff Lemire, this week drawn by Ken Lashley. Normally, Humberto Ramos has been doing it. Yeah. And Humberto Ramos is still doing the cover for this week, but Ken Lashley took over the art for this book. And I went back and looked at some of the other stuff he did, kind of like Superman Doomed. He worked on Suicide Squad for a while. His art looks cool. I saw his art and I was like, he would be great at drawing Spawn. (laughs) So, I'm really excited to see how he takes the art direction for this book and where it goes. Plus, the story is awesome, so definitely pick it up. One of my picks this week is Marvel's International Iron Man number one, which is written by Bendis, who's also writing the other Iron Man book. But this with art by Alex Maleev. This duo did Daredevil a while back, and it was critically acclaimed and freaking amazing. That's cool. Uh, He's going on an adventure to figure out who his real parents are. Who gives a shit about that? He's stupid. But the point is, it's cool, and that teaming will produce awesome stuff is it a globe hopping yes of course it is does he have a hat no he does not have a hat but Why dr doom hop without a hat i know right <gasps> dr doom is his like supporting character in that book it's like a short round <laughs> yeah i'm sure he would take offense to that but and of course Dave. from dc comics i've got to recommend superman american alien number five but you'll see more about that tomorrow on the channel dc fans here's a link to that channel right over ben so for Marvel, I want to recommend Scarlet Witch number four. I finally read the first one, so I'm still a few issues oh. behind, but I love it. Is it's, it great? It's great. That's what it's they say. great. It's awesome and it's great, and um, it's almost more mystical, magical than the Doctor Strange book wow. is. Wow. So that's up my alley. Yeah. Art's really cool. It's written by uh, James Robinson with art by Marguerite Savage. Oh Ooh. shit. So. It's cool. Yeah. Um. So I'm really. Look, I'm just. I'm looking forward to getting more into this. You know, like. Um, Give another magic person a try. Well, <laughs> spread the love around. And then I have been waiting, waiting for this issue to come out. Um, the, the one I'm gonna talk about in just a moment to tell you guys about this because I got on board with this kind of late. I think I've got a second or third printing of issue one, and God. Just, <laughs> Ugh. I'm talking about Monstrous Number Four um, from Image. It's written by Marjorie Liu with art by Santa Takeda. If you don't know what Monstrous is, uh, imagine an an adult themed, super violent, rated M for mature Final Fantasy game that you're never gonna play. And oh, that's kind of what this is for me. I mean, she describes it as being an alternative or an alternate 1900s Asia, like Asian story kind of okay. thing. Like, You're like, yeah, but it's, it's Final Fantasy. 
it feels like it because you got the magic and there's still tech and there's guns and there's two different factions and there's fighting and there's like you know mystical about... animals and like cra- it's just it is rated M for mature. Cool. This book is not for anyone under the age of seventeen. So if you are under the age of seventeen and you're not buying it digitally, you're gonna find it hard to get a hold of anyway. Yeah. Um, but if you like Final Fantasy, I would give this a try. The first issue, by the way, I think the first, the first issue is a little more pricey. Um, so you know, get in the store, get online. But it is a 72-page issue. Holy crap. Go get it. Yeah. Wow. That's huge for a book. Yes. Yeah. It's very That's cool. It's practically a graphic novel. All right? The art's really fun. It's really pretty. It's just... Ah. Nice. I, I couldn't wait. I was so excited to see this coming out of the I'm like, yes! I can talk about it. I've been so far behind, and then it's just... Ah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this episode Off the Rack, and we'll see you guys next week with an all-new episode. I am Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. Keep on reading. Ooh, one more thing. Oh. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for all their online support of our our Comic Pop Cat Wash. That's right, yeah. Um, hopefully by the time you're seeing this, he'll be back at Comic Pop headquarters. Yep. And feeling better. So we really appreciate it. He has been gone for several days now. Yep. Getting a lot of work done, a lot of things um, yeah. that had to be fixed up. Everybody online was super great. Yeah. You know, lots of love and, you know, we really appreciate it. Yeah. That's Thanks, it. guys. <laughs>